Hi, everyone. I'm Alfred. Welcome back to Kingdom of Loathing. Kingdom of Loathing. I did a little grinding off screen, um, and then I decided to do Lady Spookraven's quest, although I didn't actually show myself starting it, so. You're fighting a malevolent hair clog. As you enter the spooky Raven Manor bathroom, you notice a strange gurgling noise coming from the shower drain. Draw back the curtain to investigate, and a rhyming, sli wriggling, slimy column of hair erupts from the drain, forming a vaguely human shape in midair. Glob of wet hair. Ew. Ew. <laughs> Where is a glob of wet hair? Oh, yeah. I also did a little more grinding and got some more stuff. It's a combat item. Stops enemy from attacking. Weakens it slightly. Oh, yeah. I also... um. I went uh, here and I got this. I finally Googled just what I need. I got a sewing kit. It's a sewing kit. I just need a sewing kit. That's what they meant by needle. I kept looking in like, oh, I need a needle. So now I can actually do this quest. Gear in hand, you go back to Z Fanning. He rubs his hands together excitedly. Good, he says. That's everything. He rolls the pellet of plant fluid between his fingers, stretching it out slightly, and pushes the needle through it then stuffs them into the end of the bendy straw. He places the straw in his mouth, then aims at the top of the cliff with one eye squeezed shut. He makes a slight adjustment to the strong's bend and aims again. With a sharp puff of air, he fires the makeshift blow dart at the top of the cliff, where it hits a cluster of small vines. The, glines Im the vines immediately swell and thicken, lengthening until they reach the ground. Thanks, kid, says Dakota as he jumps and starts climbing up the vines hand over hand. You're a little peach. Hey, you protest. What about my payment? I'll give you your own footnote in my article for the journal... Loathing Journal of Archaeology, he calls down, then disappears over the top of the cliff. I never told you my name, you shout back, but he's already gone. Grumbling, you make a note of the temple's location on your map. You hope he gets killed by pygmies or something. You're fighting a ba-ha's ba relief sheep. <laughs> With a menacing ba, is there any other kind? One of the bass relief sheep carved on the wall leaps off and attacks you. You better quick wool gathering and attack, lest it leave you shorn of your dignity. <laughs> You're fighting a stone temple pirate. <laughs> oh, that's good. One of the myriad carved stone pirate heads on the wall in the temple comes to life as you approach. Intruder, he shouts, glaring at you with eyes of disarray. Or one of them, anyway. The other one's under an eye patch. Looks like you need to fight him now rather than wait for tomorrow. He tries to wound you in your hand, but you take time to dodge. Ancient poison dart. You're fighting a craven carven raven in a room within the temple which is simple as a pimple you are strolling with your thoughts as carefree as a lark while you walk some cobweb snatching suddenly there came a scratching as of something stone like hatching hatching somewhere in the dark <laughs> then there came a bird descending intent on your life ending downward downward it came wending with a bite far worse than bark quote the raven Arr! that's really funny <laughs> whoa we broke 200. Whoa, we did 231 damage. Holy, whoa. That's incredible. Dang. Also, I love that. I, I didn't get it for a second, but it's it's the same cadence as the, as the Raven. That was awesome. <laughs> So does that get us anything? Dakota Fanny came of loving. Hidden Temple. Sleep sheep. Okay, so we do get some more. Okay. Oops. Am I still recording? Yes, I am. Okay. So I just need to randomly get lucky. Ah, that's the end of the quest. I'm fine with just leaving it there. All right, sure. All right. Ancient poison dart. This rusty little, this dusty little dart sat in centuries in an ancient trap mechanism in the hidden temple. They don't make poisons like they used to, but they definitely make it. But they definitely used to make it like they used to. So the poison on this one is definitely good and potent cool 
Uh, that reminds me. I've actually... Uh, I explored up here and I found a random encounter that totally killed me. Yeti fur. Nice. Nice. Dominant. Oh, I actually haven't read these. You're fighting a snow queen. This was the one that killed me. This frosty monarch is made of a cloud of whirling snow with a ringle, regal crown floating on top of it. She's a bit of a fat bottom girl, but she hits like dynamite with a laser beam. If you don't stop her now, she'll be the champion, my friend. She blows hot and cold at you. Well, mostly cold. Oh, whoops. I should have uh, stunned her first. Cool. And now we will thrust Mac. You win the fight. All right. Upgraded ram. We got a ram stick. <laughs> All right, yeah. So um, those are the last encounters. That, that's the encounter that I missed. Perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. All right. Um, now that I've got a Yeti fur, let's go down here. Yeah, let's get a yak skin. Why not? Yak skin. It's going to be yak. Thick and hairy. You know, I don't know what that actually does for me. Um, I imagine the penguin skin might uh, make cold resistant armor, which is, you know, probably what I need, but I can do that off screen if I want. But I throw the Smackdown. Torg. Ire of the Orca. Wait, my skills. Orcas are always upset about some supposed indignity they suffered in the ancient past. And they're really large, so they have more volume to contain their upset in. Fury capacity increases to five gallons. So now we can do five crits in a row. Which is far more. That's that's a lot. That's radical. So yeah, we can... Uh, I don't know why I went all the way back out here, because I was going to go here. So yeah, I finished off Dakota Fanning. So that's now gone. Um... And then Spooky Raven, right. Stairs up. Hold on the bathroom. You're fighting a toilet paper geist. Have I read this? As you enter the Spooky Raven Manor bathroom, the carpet cabinet under the sink opens of its own accord. Roll after roll of TP pours out, stacking up to form a human shaped and human sized monstrosity. Lumbers towards you and likes a tissue. We got a roll of toilet paper. Malevolent hair clog. I think I read yeah, I read this one. I just read it this episode. You're fighting a clawfoot bathtub. The bathtub rears up on its back feet and charges at you. I have... Okay, I read that one. I remember why I didn't want to go here, because it's just a lot of... It tries to slap you, but you're not going to get slapped around by any Tom, Dick, or Harry monster that wanders by. That's funny. Um, yeah, I just remembered that uh, I have been here. Toilet paper. What does it do? Wait, what? Toilet, toilet paper. Is it an online item? It's a roll of toilet paper. I'm pretty sure you have a good idea what this is used for in the real world, but since this game isn't realistic, or concerned with the fourth roll, apparently, this roll is only useful for making a mess of someone else's campsite. What do these do? You head to the part of Seaside Town where the rich birds hang out and sell the stones to the highest bidder. Nice. Shiny stones. Stone birds in the stone, hidden temple aren't just carvings, you know. They have feelings. They have needs. Like the need to connect shiny objects like these. Dope. All right. Help me recoup some of my meat. Since I am missing a little meat. um, Since I bought like a thousand gum on string. You know, I might be able to sell some of those. Sell all but one. All right. Bugbear Beanie. Turtle Helm. Yeah. Mariachi hat. Ravioli hat. Miner's helm. Hollandaise helm. Goat beard. Disco mask. Oh man. There's a lot of these. You know, actually, sell all. Um, and then let's just keep on selling.
There certainly is a lot. Oh, wait, I need these. All right. All right. I can sell this. Hmm. I would love to be able to get rid of more of these, but I don't really know what exactly. Because I know that I need them for something. I just don't know what. Um, yeah, sell them. You sell your helmet turtles, turtle totems, pasta spoons, ravioli hats, saucepans, disco masks, disco pants, disco balls, stolen accordion, scimitars, tongs, pants, skeleton bones, bugbear beanies, Cannon maces, goat beards, extreme scars, miners' helmets, miners' pants, seven foot dwarven matic, two boxen. The pearl of boxes boxen. <laughs> That's funny. Arrested grave robbing shovel, grave robbing shovel, bone flute, mariachi hats, Hollandaise helmets, three legged pants, and brown paper pants, and your bread basket to a bugbear breeder for 1,689 meat. Cool. Great, in fact. Precisely what I need. Um, now what? I don't really feel much like doing Lady Spooky Raven stuff. Because now that I've just remembered that it's just all, like, just running around and grinding. Oh, here we go. Never gonna make you up. You see an ornate makeup case in a dusty vanity. Spooky Raven monogram on it. And it's probably full of all manner of fancy lady creams and powders. On the other hand, it's bouncing up and down like there's some kind of malevolent spirit possessing it. So opening it might be dangerous. On the other hand, if you're not going to open it, why are you wasting your time? You're fighting a cosmetics wraith. You open the case and a whirling cloud of eyeshadow, blush, and powder swirls out. Studded with eyelash curlers and eyeliner pencils. I'm guessing it's less intent on making you a pretty, pretty princess and more intent on making you a corpse. Throw some blush in your teeth, on your old cheeks. You look more healthy, but that old makeup is full of all kinds of toxic compounds. <sighs> Whoa! Damn. Old bronzer, old rosewater queen, old eyebrow pencil, and Lady Spooky Raven's puff. Shoot. That's incredible. <laughs> uh, all right. Actually, hell no. I, uh, I'll come back and do this later. So let's see what I even got. Old bronzer. It's old rosewater cream. This is an this is a rosewater based skin cream modeled after ancient Roman cosmetics and old enough that it might be from ancient Rome. Uh, rosewater Mark Twenty Five Adventures. Bunch of spell stuff. Old eyebrow pencil. <laughs> it's so old. It's more like an eyebrow quill pen. Am I right? I guess I'm not. Not really. Muscle plus ten. Weapon damage plus five. And two muscle stats per fight. That's kind of useful. Uh, stuff like that is always useful whenever you got to go grind a bunch because you're going to get more stat. And then old bronzer is just moxie. This is an antique ceramic pot of makeup designed to simulate a sun tan. Drawing of a sun label is designed to simulate a sun. And then, yeah, it's more initiative and... Okay, cool. That's pretty good. Um, let's go to the orgasm. I'm feeling good about, like, these big old quests. No bridge. Click here to attempt to build one. You have no appropriate lumber or fasteners. And then we have to go to the Smut Orc Logging Camp. So this is the Orc Chasm. It's a very, you know, yonic hole in the ground. You're fighting a Smut Orc Screwer. The Smut Orc affixes pieces of wood together with screws and a screwdriver. And a screwdriver to drink while he works. We get a long, hard screw. This is an exceptionally long wood screw. Galvanized for extra rigidity. You wouldn't want the thing snapping off halfway through, would you? You find a smut orc jacker. This orc is in charge of cutting down or jacking the lumber used in smut orc construction. He's not a jacker of all trade, just the lumberjack trade. For lunch, he enjoys flapjacks, applejacks, and jackfruit. 
We get morning wood plank and orcish hand lotion. <laughs> oh, yeah, I never looked at this. Holy shit. This is a stick for battering rams. You got it from a ram who probably you got it from the last Yahoo tried to hit it with him. It's two-handed, but it's 12 to 23. Holy moly. That's a lot. We got morning wood plank. This is a piece of lumber that was jacked from a sunrise tree. Sunrise trees are bore moisture through the air throughout the night. So by dawn, every branch is dense and rigid. We got a long, hard screw. An orcish hand lotion. Never fumble. Regenerate a bunch of HP and MP per adventure. That's cool. When you do as much jacking as a smut orc, it takes a toll on your hands. Scrapes, calluses, blister, and so forth. The orcs use this hand lotion to keep the palms suppy, supple and rosy. Smut orc nailer. This smut orc is in charge of affixing one piece of wood to another. He does, show, he does so by driving sharpened bits of metal through both pieces, using a striking implement called a hammer. As long as he's carrying this hammer around, every problem looks like a nail, including you. It's a Mazblow's hammer. Messy butt joint. <laughs> this is two pieces of wood placed against each other or butted together with wood glue somewhat carelessly thrown in to make them stick. <laughs> oh, man. Wow, look at how little I have in here now. You're fighting a smut orc pipe layer. <laughs> this smut orc digs trenches and places a series of water wo waterproof wood pipes in them to make the orcish sewer and water system work. And, you know, to make sure the sewer and fresh water systems are two different systems. That's the important part. We got another morning wood plank. And a jacker. And more morning wood. We have... Three pieces of lumber and three fasteners. Use some of the, the horrible building materials from the Smut Orcs camp to start building a bridge. And we got one little plank there. Two out of 30. Shoot. I mean, I guess I could do it. We've got brow beaten. You try to pretty up your eyebrows, but the cakey, clumpy old pencil breaks off and gives you a massive jutting mono brow instead. Sapia tan. You apply bronzer to the parts of you that don't have a fake tanning agent applied to them. There's a bunch of the cream left, so you use it to draw a cool glyph on your forehead. Hell yeah. Smut orc nailer. Messy butt joint. Thick cock. <laughs> I'm 12. I'm 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> oh lord help me <laughs> oh man the cock <laughs> this is a tube of an industrial sealant slash waterproofing agent it's used to fill small gaps in wood smooth imperfections and provide a moisture barrier between surfaces this particular cock is a This particular cock is exceptionally thick and is black to better blend in with the smut or construction projects. The L is not silent, but it is snickering behind its back. This is a piece of lumber that was jacked from a surprise tree. A hardy species that springs up from the ground seemingly overnight where no flora had grown before. Long hard screw, backward screwdriver, and screwing pooch. <laughs> screwing pooch. <laughs> Let's make another attempt. All right. We have two fasteners. We've got six out of 30. Okay, so we're one-fifth of the way done. Let's go take a look at that. I the other items we've got. Backward screwdriver. It's good booze. This is like a regular screwdriver, but made with high-test moonshine instead of vodka. Okay. And I never looked at this. This is a bottle of enchanted suntan lotion. It'll increase your moxie by giving you an attractive, even tan with no burning. Well, I've already got the fake tan on me, but why not? We gain seven chutzpah. All right. All right. Screwing pooch. 3% item drops for monsters. A pooch is like a pouch, but smaller for a specific purchase. 
The smut orc screw is used to store screws and screwing related necessities, such as lube as spare driver heads. Actually, if I'm going to be item grinding, I may as well um, go uh, put on a bunch of stuff. Batskin belt. Um, hmm. I have a, uh, I sold one of the things that gives me uh, item drops, didn't I? Oh, well. Let me see here. Smoke damage. I never looked at this. Food drops. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Smut Arc Nailer. Messy butt joint. God. Orcish Nailing Lube. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. It's an item. Weapon damage plus 10. It gives you well lubed. The Smut Orc Nailer has discovered you could easily keep the wood from cracking and splintering if you give your nails a thin coat of mineral oil lube. After all, when you're nailing something, the last thing you want is a splinter in the cock. <laughs> I'm losing my mind. I'm losing my mind. Oh, man. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> all right. Jeez, I haven't gotten any wood. All right, now I just got some. Huh. All I've really got right now is these two things. Actually, I could go here. Uh, whoa. Main map. Nearby plants. Whoa. A giant fish carcass. A giant discarded plastic fork. A giant rotten tomato. A giant pile of coffee grounds. A giant banana peel. Giant paper towel tube. Toilet paper tube. Giant wedge of moldy cheese. And giant crushed beer cans. Let's go to the coffee grounds. You stare at the pile of coffee grounds for a moment and encourage you to remember your grandma wasn't so crazy after all. You pull out an enchanted bean and plop it in the pile of grounds. It grows into an enormous beanstalk. You poke the giant fish carcass with a stick, all right. There's no way that this fish is local. <laughs> you walk to the tomato and consider it for a moment. Can you imagine someone made a movie about a bunch of giants that live in a castle in the sky and can only be reached via, I don't know, some kind of enchanted beanstalk or something? That'd be the worst movie ever. Seeing this giant fork makes you wonder what the giant what the giant fork is going on in this place. It's as though some giants are just dropping randomly garbage out of the sky. That can't be possible, can it? You check out the banana peel. It's pretty fresh, but you can't think of any use for it, unless you wanted to make a hilarious short film about a giant. Hmm, giant. Go inside the tube and investigate. It's like a normal pal it's like a normal paper paper towel tube. Only you fit. It doesn't shed much light on the mystery. You investigate the block of moldy cheese. As you suspected, it's very moldy and very cheesy. Speaking of cheesy, what's up with kids' fairy tales, am I right? I mean, a kid plants an enchanted bean, and it grows into a beanstalk, and climbs the beanstalk to some kind of crazy castle in the sky with giants in it. Seriously, come up with some better material, people. This is without a, this is without a doubt the largest pair of cans you've ever seen. You do not want to mess with a guy who can drink this much beer. The way they're crushed, it looks like they were dropped from a pretty great height. I still don't know how to get the clown stuff. Whoa. Can't get there unless you can figure out how to fly. The penultimate fantasy airship. I remember this. Okay. The beginning, the beginning of the end of the penultimate fantasy. You step off the beanstalk and onto the airship and are immediately confronted by one of the guards keeping the propellers wound up. What do you think you're going? He snarls. Uh, you spelled the first lane layer that comes to mind. I just woke up on a tropical be beach with amnesia and <laughs> made my way here. Oh, that sounds about right. You're probably going to be the protagonist of the story. So you might know you're, we're looking for the four immateria, a quartet of essential elements that allow us to construct an airship to get to the castle and the clouds in the sky. 
You up here in your airship looking for parts to build an airship. Yep. The grunt on the place. There's something about dark spirits and aliens and stuff punching through plants and whatnot, but that's about the size of it. Well, I guess I'll keep an eye for the immaterial so we can get off this airship and onto an airship, you say. Cocking the head of the guy. Still not sure he's not making fun of you. Sounds good. Grunt nods and goes back to wanting propellers. You're fighting an irritating series of random encounters. <laughs> You're trying to walk from the front of the airship to the back, but are unable to do so without being attacked by a series of 10 to 20 identical nondescript enemies. That's irritating. These are the slimes from Dragon Quest. Whoa. I forgot that I'm actually in the an area that I'm supposed to be. <laughs> your powerful thrust impresses your foes, but the ensuing smack that dazzles them as well as it deals 22, 122 damage. We got a tiny house and a cocoa eggshell fragment. We got a muscle point. Small fragment of what appears to have been a chocolate egg. This is a very tiny house. Perfect for toting around. Oh, it's the... It's the rest. You're fighting a Magitech... Magimech Tech Mecha Mech. This is a big robot powered by a sinister blend of magic and technology. Since sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic, you're not sure in what proportion. Uh, that's a that's a really good quote. I want to say it's from Arthur C. Clarke. Um, sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from, from magic. And then the corollary, sufficiently unadvanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Uh, your opponent, <laughs> it fires some kind of bright pink laser beam at you. Kawaii! Oh, and ow! You lose 40 hit points. There's a... I, I was I was just thinking of this. What's this guy's name? Bill. I think it's Bill. Bill 1L. Yeah, this dude. I really, really love this guy's design. I don't know what it is. He uh the neverhood, for those who don't know, is um this really really like cool uh adventure game uh Vinny recently streamed it for those who Vinny from Vine Sauce that is to say for those uh who were looking to see it because it's very difficult the whole thing is made completely with clay it's all claymation um and it's it's one of my like I don't know how like favorite it is but like it's such a cool idea you know because the whole game is made in clay and uh bill just has this really really cool design he's got three arms and like oh uh, that's super dope anyway i was just thinking about that because he's a magitech robot all right i'm glad that i'm actually at a point where i can get challenged man <laughs> i feel like after part 10 like season two started or something you know it's kind of unfortunate because um I feel like some people might have dropped this after, like, uh, part 10. Well, Metallic A. I feel like some people might have dropped this before they got here, and, like, I'm having so much fun with it now. There's a lot of cool stuff going on. This is a large letter A, letter a made out of some shiny metal. Okay. Random lack of an encounter. You make it halfway across the deck of an airship without randomly encountering an enemy. Take advantage of the rare opportunity by investigating one of the below deck's areas. Investigate the quarters. Fighting a burly sidekick. It's Barrett. As you climb down the ladder into the crew quarters, you notice the sound of heavy snoring coming from one of the bunks. You sneak back, try to sneak back out without sleep, waking the sleeping burly sidekick, but you make a lot of noise as you trip on one of those chests they leave laying all over the place. He rises and stumbles blearily towards you, arm mounted machine gun at the ready. You get the jump on him. Nice. I really like. Um, I really like how in the remake of uh, Final Fantasy VII, they just, he tries to fire out a, <laughs> what's this big beefy guy with a machine gun for an arm doing hanging out with a bunch of big headed anime losers? You don't have much time to ponder the question as he charges your way with a, with a menacing, I pity the fool. <laughs> he starts to fire another couple of rounds out of his art gun arm, but it's out of ammo. As he starts to reload, someone offers him a glass of milk. He drinks it and passes out for a while. Um, so that's Mr. T, naturally. I pitied the fool because Mr. Mr. T is kind of an RPG character as he's in uh, World of Warcraft. Guys, remember that? World of Warcraft? Remember how Mr. T played it? I wonder if he still does. Um, 
but on oh god what was it i think it was the a team the original a team um mr t's character i want to say b.a baracus had a fear of planes and so every episode they have to drug him with a glass of milk because he, he loves milk we got arm gun that's probably a weapon that i can't use magitech magic 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 attack all right more random encounters they swarm around you, bouncing and excitedly up and side down. Then they start bouncing up and down on top of you. You feel irritated, random, and in intense pain. Critical hit. What the hell? I think my cat's peeing somewhere. Sorry. <laughs> More cocoa eggshell fragments. Gesund to Geist. You pause in your epic journey across this airship to take a breather. Suddenly, your eyes are flooded with an otherworldly light. You look up and see the most beautiful creature you've ever seen floating in front of you. She's a spirit, that much is certain, but a so material light passes through her. As you gaze upon her beauty, you are overcome by the urge to sneeze. Huh? Huh? <laughs> you sniffle. The spirit looks tenderly at you. You feel the tickle in your obs of size. Take this with you, adventurer. She whispers and vanishes. Tissue paper, your materia. Interesting. Arm gun. If a simple handgun is too small for you, try this. It's the machine gun used by a burly sidekick used, that the burly sidekick used to have instead of one arm before you disarmed him. So if you've got bare arms, use them to bare arms, and then you'll be armed to bear. Uh, it's a ranged weapon, two-handed machine gun, bunch of damage, crit. Okay, well, that's all right. Teach your favorite material. This is a small spear of the purified essence of tissue paper. It's very light. This is the powder puff Lady Spooky Raven used to apply powder to a face in an effort to make herself look less pale. You think that would be less of a concern now she's translucent. Cool. We got the first immateria. You're fighting a spooky princess. This is a girl who doesn't take guff from anyone. Takes whatever she wants from whoever she encounters and inexplicably wields an umbrella as a weapon. She's cute, but unfortunately... <laughs> She's in love with the protagonist, so you'll have to beat her senseless and take her stuff instead. But I'm the protagonist. Got another tiny house. You're fighting a protagonist. This is a 12-year-old boy who has somehow become most, one of the most powerful warriors in the world. He's on a quest to save the world that will somehow redeem himself from a past he doesn't remember. Perhaps getting a smackdown will jar his memory. We got the Ocarina of Space. Space and time are the same things. This is a permanent little food made of clay. Someone must have got tired of all the dreidel dreidel dreidels. It's not an ocarina of outer space, mind you. Its enchantments control the space in your nearby vicinity, mostly by filling it with unpleasant sounds. <laughs> oh, man. So I've got a ranged weapon, and I've got uh, a magic weapon now. A flute weapon. Let's go to the cargo hold. You enter the cargo hold, and are starting to find packed wall-to-wall -wall and sealing the floor with treasure chest. And these guys must be obsessive about collecting treasure. It's like they're trying to get 100% of the treasure in the world or something. They won't miss one single measly little chest, so you grab one and head back above decks. You gain 84 meat, super spiky air, hair gel, and soft green echo eyedrop antidote. I'll be honest. If I could get Mako eyes, I would. Mako eyes look so cool. My wife says that my eyes are very, very beautiful. But Mako eyes are more cool. This is liquid filled with a, remark <laughs> a remarkably versatile liquid. It'll fix just about anything that could be wrong with you. Allows you to remove an effect. Interesting. Just any effect? Super spiky hair gel. This hair fixative looks like it'd be good for making unbelievably spiky hair. Plus six muscle and moxie. Cool. And we also got some cash money, yo. Burly sidekick. He punches you with the gun arm. Questionable. <laughs> it's a questionable strategy, but it still hurts like the dickens, Charlie. We got a tiny house. A quiet healer. This is a quiet girl who is probably the last survivor of some ancient race of extremely quiet, extremely magical people. After being improbably rescued from either the government or some evil empire by the protagonist, she stands quietly by his side. <laughs> silently casting heal itself on him. He's not here to protect her now, though. She gets the jump on you. Right in your bong. Ow, 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 ow. Fumble. Right in your groin. 
Nice. Cool. Fight's over. Spunky princess. She whips you with her spunky pigtails. Ew. 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 Why did they have to say that? Ugh. For those who don't know, spunk is another synonym for semen. Spunky princess. Okay, this is the last one. Protagonist, give me your sword. Phonics down. <laughs> phonics down. This is a handful of soft feathers from the legendary phonics. With the advent of instant messaging, the said the great bird is said to have spontaneously combusted. Legends tell that the phonics will one day be reborn and the rivers will run red with the blood that, of those who can't spell. Restores a bunch of HP and MP and does a lot of other weird stuff. I need the MP. You get tingly biceps. You run the phonics down in your biceps. Your biceps tingle with muscle. Oh, I get more muscle. Yeah, look at that. 115. That's really funny. That's really funny. That's... <laughs> oh, that's great. Okay, I'm, I'm going to do one more. Pretty honest. Oh, I got the hiccups. Phonics down. Nice. Okay. And now I'm going to go here. You can see it, but you can't get to it without some means of traveling to space. So that's the hole in the sky. That's a cool area. Burly sidekick. Dang. I was hoping that I could go there, but. Muscle point. Kawaii. It fires a torpedo. We got our photo proto newton torpedo. Here we go. This is one of the magical and technological weapons used by the Magimech Tech Mecha Mechs. It's awfully dangerous and dangerously awful. Combat item, and it deals 30 to 40 physical damage. Dang. That isn't bad, although it, I don't imagine it would be that great because I uh, do a whole bunch of damage on my own. I'm well lubed. A thin coat of oil on your weapons will keep it from sticking to any tight chinks on your enemy's armor or getting it stuck between a couple of ribs. There's nothing more awkward in <laughs> battle than having to say, so if you could turn your torso a little to the left, I could have my sword back and we can fight more. Don't chew on that spirit. <laughs> oh, man. When you're in, you're in the heat of battle aboard the airship, when your enemies inexplicably vanish in a flash of brilliant reflective light. When your eyes clear, you see the shiniest sphere you've ever squinted at, at which you have ever squinted. Greetings, adventurer, the spirit says, waving its arms, which blinds you all over again. I've come to give you something that'll help you on your quest. The spirit places an object at your feet. You realize you've been looking at the dull side of the spirit. When it turns to leave, you're here with a full blast of the shiny side and blackout. Actually, you're white out. When you come to, you examine the object the spirit left you. Tin foil immateria. Yeah, we got two of the four. The small smear of the purified essence of tinfoil. It's very shiny. Um, hmm. I could go to... I could go do more uh, of the penultimate fantasy ship. But I could also go to Spooky Raven Manor. Eh. All oh, right, I've already been here. I don't think I've been here, actually. You're fighting an animated ornate nightstand. This nightstand is covered with intricate carvings. Before the demonic possession, they were probably beautiful depictions of woodland creatures and whatnot. But now the carvings rive and show nothing but hellscapes and curse words. You investigate the Nastel nightstand? Oh, brother. Having beaten it a waste of Sunday, you approach the nightstand. We need her gown. Open the top drawer? It's always weird to see old meat because it's a different color than new meat, but it spends as well, so you're not complaining. Antique rusted nightstand. Rustic. This nightstand is going for that cabin in the woods look, with rough hewn bleached wood and a rusty horseshoe for a drawer pole. It's the kind of furniture people who've never been anywhere near the woods like to put in their guest bedrooms. Bottom drawer? You open the drawer on purpose, 
and a little ball of ghostly light darts out of it directly into your sack. Do you think it did that on purpose? Grouchy restless spirit. This tiny ball of floating gray vapor is a spirit containing confined to this plane because of some unfinished business. Apparently been here for a long time because it seems really grumpy about it. Or maybe it was a really grumpy person before. Ooh, I've actually got the cash. Let's go spend some meat. This episode has been going for a little while. Forgive me. Um, it's not too, too long and I've only got 14 left. Lunging thrust smack. This is a thrust smack with a lunge added to it to, for good measure. If it connects, it'll do triple weapon damage, dude. So we've got clobber, which is just a regular smack. Lunge and then smack. Extra five damage. Double damage. A crit. What are crits worth? Yeah, I don't actually know exactly what crits are worth. 9% chance. Spell damage. Okay. Main weapon damage plus... It doubles the weapon power component. Okay. Okay, so this doubles the weapon power, but this just does double damage of all of it, whereas this is triple damage, so that's really good, actually. That's really powerful. That said, this costs, so this is actually weaker, but it costs nothing, but I can only do five of them. Animated mahogany nightstand. <laughs> this is a heavy mahogany nightstand animated by some demonic force. Looks ready to remind you that you can't spell mahogany without misspelling agony. All right. Let's look under it. Nothing. Great. You're finding an animated ornate nightstand. Look behind it. Spooky Raven Specs. Please, my dancing things, hurry. Wait, then what are the spectacles? They're an accessory? They're a quest item. Once owned by Lord Spooky Raven. Since Spooky Raven had perfect vision, they wondered why he wore them. But people wondered a lot of things about him because he was a weirdo. <laughs> That's funny. Um... So now I just have to kind of bang on these things for a little bit. He screws a screw into you, waking and asking if you get it. Smut Orc Keepsake Box. This is a Smut Orc's most pre precious possession, a box in which to store his construction keepsakes. Big box, but there's a lot to put but there's a lot to put in it, so it ends up being a tight fit. You don't want to know what's inside this box, so you dump the contacts down a well and smash the box with a hammer. <laughs> That's really funny. You uh, acquire some intact building materials from the carnage. Raging hardwood plank. Morning wood, three weird wood, three long screws, thick caulk, and butt joint. This is a plank of lumber that was jacked from a bully tree so named because of its sharp spiny leaves that almost seem to go out of the way to attack passerby raging hardwood is five times more dense than bacon stone it's almost as dense as actual bullies that's funny pipe layer and we got a plank yeah i'm gonna finish out here i'm just gonna try to get uh as as much as i can so i can try to finish it um, I might finish it off screen. Uh, no, I'll, I'll, I'll get enough to finish it. Actually, let's just check how we are right now. Yo, 17 out of 30. We're more than halfway there. Messy butt joint. All right, yeah. I'm just going to finish up here because the episode has already gone off. Yeah, for much, for definitely long enough. 
Um, it's not as though like I want these to be too long. Freshwater pearl necklace. Oh boy. <sighs> the smut orc pipe players, besides constructing sewer and water lines, are in charge of clearing contaminants from the water supply, such as the oysters that collect there. Let's drink something cheap, because maybe it won't over overfill me. Nope. Oh well. Oh wait. Twenty out of thirty. Two thirds there. Yeah, all right. Raging hardwood plank and orcish hand lotion. I see butt joint. Morning wood. All right, cool. That's twenty three out of thirty. Nice. Out of adventures. All right. Can I drink anything else? You pour the backward screwdriver into your purdy mouth and the flavor makes you squeal like a pig. 27 strength. And three drunkenness. All right, cool. Um, that's Kingdom of Loathing. I got a good couple of uh, episodes out of this session. Um, I'm really, really... like. Earlier, I was just like, yeah, Kingdom of Loathing. It's a fun little game. Whatever. Might not beat it. Now, I'm really having fun. I might come back. I might even do a season two. This whole, this whole thing is doing really, really good. Um, turns out, doing the main quest is good for me. Uh, I should have been doing it already, but I digress. Uh, that's been Kingdom of Loathing. Remember to support the developers. They're all great. I love this game. Um, I've been Alfred. Thanks for coming by. This has been Kingdom of Loathing. Uh, stay curious about the future. Thank you.